Kinsey. Senators bring it the other way. Kachuk for Giroux in front. And they score. And it's Claude Giroux, number 300 for the former Flyers captain. Longtime voice of the Oshawa Generals, now of Hockey Night in Canada, Mike Luck with the call. Claude Giroux gets his 300th goal uh, in Ottawa against Philadelphia. We're not going to go through the games. We're going to deal with uh, the culture of hockey right now and to the point. First at a macro level, and then we'll get down to the team level. Kevin was unbelievable in Vancouver. As you know, Mitchell Miller, signed by the Boston Bruins, the 20-year-old, who when he was a teenager had racially abused and bullied a young black classmate who was developmentally challenged. Uh, we don't have all the facts, so to give you a teachable moment uh, right now would be impossible. But we're all processing, including the teammates uh, of the Boston Bruins organization. Let's listen to Nick Foligno. It's, it's not something that anyone in this room stands for. So, you know, the culture that we've built and these guys have built before I got here is, is one of inclusion and, and, and you know, I, I think it goes against that. Um, so I understand he was 14 when he made this mistake, but, you know, it's, it's, it's hard for us to swallow because we take a lot of pride in here. Uh, the way we act, the way we carry ourselves, what it is to be a Bruin. Um, so that that was a it was a tough you know thing to hear for our group. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't. We invited Don Sweeney, the general manager, to join us tonight. He declined. Uh, Elliot and Jeff on 32 Thoughts. Much more on this story as it's developing. Jennifer, why don't you give us just a, a first blush impression? Sure. Uh, a reaction would be one of confusion and concern on what has Mitchell done to earn uh, this signing. Uh, in terms of what we've learned, the information that's been provided. Uh, what steps has he taken uh, to prove that he's learned from this or grown as a person? Or what has he done to show his regret or to educate other people to prevent such horrible things from happening? And this wasn't one single minor incident. This was ongoing. And so if somebody's going to earn a second chance, there needs to be more proof of what steps have been taken uh, to get that opportunity. I think that uh, it's a positive sign for our game where the players are speaking out now and not just doing this internally and saying in a little group, uh, I don't agree with this signing. None of us do. Um, but I think it's really important that they get their message out to the public to make sure the public knows the Boston Bruin players do not agree with this. That's a strong message to me. It is. And if you look at the culture of a team is like a house. If you want it to be strong and stand the test of time, it has to have a strong foundation. And on a hockey team, a foundation is 25 bricks or weight-bearing walls, 25 people on the team. And by those clips, it shows a lot of those players don't agree. They don't want a faulty brick or a weight-bearing wall knocked down on their team and with their culture, messing with it. We're not mm -hmm. sure if he's acknowledged uh, his wrongdoing, let alone the impact of uh, the hurt he created with the, the actions, Miller. Uh, but again, we're, we're a little bit in the dark on this. I yeah. mean, Gary Bettman speaks in the NHLPA, says, well, Gary had no right to say that. And uh, we're hearing different things from different people uh, within the organization. Uh, Eustace King, his agent, is an extremely well-respected individual, so it's complicated. And, uh, yeah, as I say, more on 32 Thoughts. So one, one quick thing, though. Uh, Sheldon Kennedy and the Respect Group have been working with Stanley Bowman, and this is an incredible program, a pilot project with the Calgary Hitmen, Red Deer Rebels, Edmonton Oil Kings. They're creating a respect charter. Each team was asked to sit down and tell everybody what respect meant to them, how to hold one another accountable. So this is an ongoing project just underway in the Western Hockey League and the CHL with the respect group and uh, having the players again speak, as you said, yep. Kelly. Okay, here's Kevin Bieksa to Vancouver Canucks Thursday morning uh, at skate time. I think it takes like three to four defensemen, one to two goalies, and six to seven forwards of ultra-competitive guys. Ultra-competitive in your own right. Like, are you a net front guy? Well, you're the first guy on the ice tipping pucks every morning. Are you a shooter on the flank? Well, you're a guy who's on the ice every morning shooting 100 pucks before practice, right? Like, that's what the skill guys did. That's what the Kesslers, the Burroughs, the Sidines, that's what they did. Are you an energy guy? You're in the gym. You have, like, your mandatory workouts, but you do more. You go above and beyond. So you're the best conditioned guy. You're the strongest guy. Your body's not breaking down from all the contact. You hone your craft. You take pride in what you do, and you work your doing it and that's what makes everybody a better team and then you keep each other accountable if everybody's doing that the goalies are on early everyone's working at their profession and you battle each other in practice and that's why we were a great team for eight to ten years and that's why we had a great culture 
Kelly. Well said, Kev. So um, when I look back on my career, I had one of those teaching moments also. It's my first or second year in the league. We're in St. Louis. I had my best ever game, 49 saves. We beat the Blues 5-1. The next day at practice, I was dogging it. And I watched Bob Nystrom skate right over to me. And I can't say exactly what he said, but he basically said in my ear something about get moving. And that's unacceptable. And that's kind of the message you're talking about. Everybody has to be held accountable. And I think the accountability is on so many levels, and that's yeah. an important thing to, to address. When we're talking about a winning environment, it's how are you going to behave on and off the ice, so in the locker room, but also away from the rink. And I think for Olympic teams that were successful, it was about having the best character people. And I think that's just such a, a key part uh, of hockey success and the positive rival that you do need to push people in different situations, but also understand that every person is going to be responsible and take care of each other within that environment. For me, Kevin, uh, to see the players wrap the tension was magic. Uh, how do you choose who does what role in terms of allowing them to work on their craft? I love that that wasn't so much motivational stuff mm -hmm. as here's physical things you can tangibly do to make yourself better. How do you decide who's the buddy that shoots the puck that you be the net front presence guy tipping it and so on? Well, I didn't know that that talk was going to go viral. I thought that was just going to be for them. But now that it is, we're talking about it. And that's you master your own domain. So you, you work on what you're good at and you put in the effort to be the best at it. And if everybody's doing that, then it goes together. And then now all of a sudden my words carry weight. So now if I'm always working on what I'm good at, Jen's always working at her stuff. Kelly's stopping a couple pucks once in a while. Now when we say something to you, hey, Ron, pick it up a little bit with your uh, throws to uh, Kyle Pekoskis. Now our words carry weight because we're all working our butts off and we're all mastering our own domain. So this is the Stanley Cup Finals and this is Nathan McKinnon. He's working on a specific skill. That was the Crosby tip. Here's Maroon in front. It's the same thing. You're a professional. You do what you do. You work hard at it. Your teammates see that. And all of a sudden, if you're not pulling your weight, now we can tell you. You can uh, look at the socials, too, for more of Kevin's address. To the, and they cut that down because uh, you're a little long-winded to the team. I'm sure they were. Well, a lot of beeps. Out. There's a lot of beeps from some <laughs> slurs. I wish we had that here. It was well worth it. Uh, we'll take a short break. Continue our coverage. Cabbing on the other side of the break on Hockey Night in Canada.